This is Amy Jenner. Thanks for your company. And with me now from Adelaide, Labor MP Steve Georgianison in Brisbane, Liberal MP Steve Chobo. Gentlemen, good morning, Steve Chobo. This news poll, Martin O'Shaughnessy from the polling organisation believes it's the end of the honeymoon for Kevin Rudd. Do you feel more comfortable looking at those numbers today? What I think these numbers show, Kieran, is that uh, Kevin Rudd is great at PR, but he's not good at policy implementation. Uh, the Australian people have realised that Kevin Rudd was, you know, back with the bang and bluster of uh, Kevin Rudd being uh, Kevin Kardashian, as we called him. But the reality is now we start to see a little bit of pressure applied. We start to see policies that Labor's putting out there in the public domain starting to unravel already. And the key example of that, of course, is the PNG, so-called PNG solution, uh, which already is pulling apart at the seams. We see that what's actually in the document doesn't marry up at all with what Kevin Rudd said he was going to be, which just reinforces that consistent with past form for Kevin Rudd, it's all about the announcement with no ability to follow through on the detail. Steve Chobo, Andrew Probin in the West Australian reports some internal ALP polling from the polling company UMR, which shows yep. that Labor's well and truly back in the hunt in the seat of Hasluck. Uh, it's 50-50, uh, according to polling done in Jul on July 11, compared to 61.39 when Julia Gillard was leader. Uh, so that is at least one seat that looks, uh, looks under threat from Labor. Well, Kieran, I think you summed it all up uh, in your preface when you turned around and said Labor Party polling. Uh, look, I mean, the reality is this. We know this is going to be a tough fight. We know this is going to be a close election, Kieran, and we've never for one second uh, pretended otherwise. I mean, you'd recall some time ago uh, that Tony Abbott said it's a bit like trying to climb Mount Everest. You've just got to slog one foot in front of the other. Uh, that's what we're going to keep doing. We don't take any seats for granted, but what we do know is that when you line us up against the Labor Party, when the Australian people have the chance to look at a united coalition team of which 16 members of the front bench have got previous ministerial experience and you contrast that with Labor who have been a divided and dysfunctional rabble you've got uh, seven members of cabinet refusing to serve with Kevin Rudd we think that when the Australian people compare their options that we believe they'll be more inclined to go with us because we've got okay. better policies Steve and a more united team. Steve Georgianis a few weeks into the Rudd return has the gloss come off a bit? Look, uh, all I can say um, is that what we're seeing is that the Australian public are sick and tired of negative politics. Um, and I think uh, with uh, Mr Rudd being the Prime Minister, we have seen a real contest uh, and it will be tough. Uh, it always uh, gets tough at election time and uh, certainly uh, this isn't a lay down easy meze. This will be a tough election and what people want to see, as I said, is unity. They want to see a debate of ideas. They want to see uh, policies, a way forward for Australia, not the negativity that we've been seeing from Mr Abbott for the last three years. Um, we uh, want to ensure that we see a way forward for Australia with good policies, what's best for the Australian future and these will be our articulated uh, by the Prime Minister uh, as we have already seen uh, already in the last couple of weeks. This will continue to happen right through to Election Day. So, you know, the Australian people are saying let's make this a battle of ideas, a battle of policies uh, and a battle for a good future for Australia. Steve George Arnes, a very tough policy on, PN, on the PNG deal. Uh, talking to your colleagues, how much concern is there? Obviously many of you are conflicted over that policy because of, well, the, 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 the dramatic change that we've seen from Labor on border protection issues, on asylum seeker policies, you've really moved further right than the coalition now. Well, look, this is not about moving to the right or to the left. This is not about uh, um, uh, political uh, ideology. This is about doing all that we can to prevent lives being lost at sea. Uh, we have seen for too long, as we just heard uh, the Minister Brendan O'Connor speak earlier, of uh, children being drowned at sea, mums with their babies in their arms drowning at sea. This policy is about preventing people getting on rickety boats, um, paying people smugglers thousands of dollars uh, and risking their lives. Uh, so what this policy says is that uh, if you arrive in Australia without a visa on a boat, uh, you will not be resettled here in Australia. You will be resettled in PNG uh, and processed in PNG. It's a tough policy, but at the end of the day, uh, if it saves lives, I think it's a good thing. And that should be our, our purpose, our sole purpose is to ensure that people's safety is first. Because after all, we are, we are talking about people's lives here. Uh, this is not about uh, lurching to the left or to the right or political ideology. It's about doing the right thing. And the right thing is to ensure that uh, we uh, do all that we can to save every single life and prevent people from getting on yeah, those boats, Karen, risking their lives. 
and paying okay, thousands Steve, of Chubber, dollars. I'll get to you, Steve Chubber. You can, you can respond directly to those points because I think that is the, that's the key argument from Kevin Rudd. He's basically saying that Tony Abbott's fitness for the for the office of prime ministership is has to be questioned when he is seeking to undermine this PNG deal. That was his assertion yesterday. Well, look, there is no PNG deal. What we have are two pages of an arrangement between Australia and PNG. Uh, it's not going to apply to women. It's not going to apply to children. Uh, we know that there are now currently unaccompanied minors that are still looking at coming by boat. Uh, the reality is it's also confined to not just being an unlimited, uh, every asylum seeker that comes to this country being uh, put up to PNG as Labor tried to pretend that it was. We now actually know it's contained to just the numbers that Manus Island can process, which is roughly about 600 people at the moment, Kieran. So that therefore means you're effectively talking about four days. Four days. When we've got over 47,000 asylum seekers that have come. We've had effectively an armada. And bear in mind too, Kieran, and this is where I make the point about Labor being good on PR but not good on policy implementation. I mean, we had, from Labor, in the last six years, we had, you know, the East Timor solution, we had the Bali solution, the Houston plan. Uh, we were going to have a, a People's Congress. We, we saw the failed repatriation of Africa. Afghans uh, back to Afghanistan. I mean, on every level, Labor has completely failed when it comes to border protection. And then what I find most extraordinary is like an arsonist going back to the fire. Labor caused this problem, and then Kevin Rudd says, hello, look, look what I've done. I've solved the problem. This is not a solution. It's a PR stunt. It will barely last until election day, let alone be anything long term. We've got less than two minutes to go. I want to quickly, if I can, keep you uh, nice and tight on these answers to the paid parental leave scheme. The Greens are backing the coalition approach. Uh, Steve Chobo, it's an unlikely alliance. Oh, look, it is an unlikely alliance, but we welcome the Greens adopting uh, effectively the coalition's policy. It recognises that, uh, you know, that they recognise good policy. It's a superior policy to Labor's because we give a full replacement wage for 26 weeks and superannuation, unlike Labor's, which is the minimum wage for 18 weeks. Steve Georgianis, finally to you. Uh, this is bad policy. This will hurt working families, low-income families. What this will do is whack a big new tax on, uh, on businesses, which will in turn pass it on to the consumer. So when families are at the supermarket at their checkout, they'll be paying more because of this tax on businesses. When they're at the banks doing uh, business, they'll be paying more fees because of the big tax uh, that uh, businesses will be facing to pay for this parental paid leave. This will give executives on over $100,000, uh, over $50,000 pay, while a cleaner um, on uh, less than uh, a third of that will be lucky to get twenty thousand dollars. So it's bad policy. Gentlemen, and I think Tony, the only the only friends Tony Abbott can find are Steve, in the Greens well, at the moment on this policy. We're it's out of time. Salary. Steve Chobo thanks, and Karen. Steve Georgianis, thanks very much. A lot of folks on the the royal baby, but thank Steve you. Georgianis, congratulations to you too, new grandfather at the weekend. Oh, thank you. Great news there too. <laughs> thank you. Well done. And that's, uh, yeah, Steve Georgiana, Steve Chubb there. We're going to take a quick break when we return. We've got Martin O'Shaughnessy from News Poll, Sarah Hanson Young of the Greens, and also all the latest on that. Good news out of the UK with the new prints. Stay with us.